losing descent, European descent, are carriers for this disorder. This is not an uncommon illness. This is very, very common. It is a hereditary disorder called hemochromatosis, and it happens when too much iron builds up in the body. Both your parents have to be carriers of the gene before you can get the disorder, but that is the case with one in every 300 Canadian Caucasians. In other words, this disease is 10 times as common as cystic fibrosis or muscular dystrophy, and yet as a disease of adults, it gets very little attention. Physicians are very uh, unaware of this particular problem, and to be honest, don't, even, don't believe it. Here's another geneticist telling us that everything's genetic. And in fact, this isn't that everything's genetic, but rather this is a common disorder with preventable outcomes. To fight this, the warders have set up a registry of Canadian families with the disease. And Tom and Mari Warder have dedicated their lives to educating people about it. It's like having a faulty thermostat on your fridge. So you have a little regulator somewhere in the bowel, which is supposed to shut off when you've absorbed enough iron, and then you're supposed to eliminate the rest. People with hemochromatosis lack that ability to rid their bodies of excess iron and so consequently over a period of years the iron accumulates and it builds up in the system until it lodges in a vital organ so uh, so this is a CT scan the iron builds up in the heart and stops it in the pancreas and causes diabetes in the joints arthritis and in the liver cancer and it should have a triangular or angular lines simply coming down this way. Iron caused this liver tumor. You can see that there is a distortion of that line with a bulging out into this area. And that, after we biopsy, this has been shown to be a hepatoma or liver tumor and an unfortunate consequence of the disease. And the big problem is that they present to many different physicians. They present with problems of joints, with liver, with diabetes, with skin changes, and many times some of the patients with this disorder have been treated by eight physicians. And seen, these symptoms are seen as independent problems, and it's not appreciated that they form part of the same illness. The tragedy of hemochromatosis is that untreated, it leads inevitably to cardiac failure, to diabetes, and to death. And the importance of this illness is that it's a preventable illness with simple old-style, medieval, middle-aged treatment. Yeah, it's going to be a nice day, though, Cream. Bill Bees is getting that medieval treatment once a week. Bees, a lawyer, had been through a battery of mystified doctors. They'd spent over three years looking for the cause of the arthritis that was destroying his ankle. Okay, let's just position the arm so that it's comfortable. Then he got lucky. One of them tested him for iron. How do you feel about the fact they found it so early? Collie, I tell you, the, it was described by somebody as, uh, Mr. Bees, you dodged a bullet. And uh, I know what hemochromatosis does to you if it's left unchecked. And I just feel as if I've just uh, escaped something that uh, is just a marvel that I've escaped it. The treatment okay. is simple. Once a week, Bill Bees is bled. So we've, we've been doing this uh, weekly for nearly seven months now, which gives, uh, you know, gives everyone some idea of just how much extra iron Mr. Bees did have on board. In every unit of blood, there is about 200 milligrams of iron. Because the body needs iron to make red blood cells, bleeding him leaches iron from his tissues. In order to replace the iron in the red cells, the body will have to mobilize iron from body stores. And in the case of a patient with hemochromatosis, those body stores are excessively high. So the ancient art of bloodletting still has a role in, <laughs> in medicine. When the disease is diagnosed, the okay, treatment is so simple, but so often it is not diagnosed. Have you got the one, have you done the one for Nova Scotia? I'm doing Edmonton. And that is what the warders have spent the last decade trying to change. They've set up a society, they've the media, the public. They've done it almost single-handedly. They've spent their savings on it. They've done it without any government funding. It's very beautiful metal because it has the lovely red and white. What Murray Warder got instead of funding from the federal government was the Volunteer Medal of Honor. Isn't it interesting, though, that they give you the Medal of Honor? 
Yes, isn't that a contradiction? Nonetheless, it was precious to her until last month. Lethal cancer despair, she almost sent the medal back. I also realized that without Tom and without some funding, there won't be a society. So I don't deserve a, a medal for founding a society because it's probably not going to be there much longer. In the end, she kept the medal, but her friends and fans know Mari Water is wearing out. Marie has become the founder, uh, the reason to be the major force, the executive director, the president, the resource person, the traveling salesman, so that, uh, you know, it's, becomes, it's become a job that's greater to, than any one person could handle. There's going to come a time when my health won't take it anymore. I cannot rely only on volunteers. This is actually a full-time job, and it's growing more by the day. The doctors say Mari Water's dedication has probably saved many lives. When Tom dies, so may her spirit, and with it, the Hemochromatosis Society she founded for him. For News Magazine, this is Eve Savory, CBC News, Surrey, British Columbia. Do you know about hemochromatosis? So it's an iron overload, a largely undiagnosed health problem that is uh, making thousands of Canadians sick. Uh, too much iron in the blood can lead to things like arthritis, diabetes, liver failure, uh, even heart disease. Sometimes it can come from taking too much iron in, mostly though it's a genetic disease, and CTV's medical correspondent, Avis Favreau, has this report. For seven years, Lori Cruz suffered the same vague symptoms. Mainly fatigue. It was the big thing, and then it progressively got worse and worse. What about these hands? He got arthritis in his hands, suddenly developed diabetes and liver problems. Only then did doctors figure out the cause. He had too much iron in his blood. I think it's very common uh, that the diagnosis is being missed. It's called hemochromatosis, a genetic disease that affects one in 300 people in Canada. And it's often missed by doctors because its effects are so vague. And the type of symptoms we're talking about, arthritis, fatigue, diabetes, are very common in the aging population in general. If it isn't picked up early, the high iron levels rust out key organs like the heart and liver, leading to an early death. Every single day was a struggle. Marie Warder's husband, Tom, struggled for 17 years with the disease and died because he was diagnosed too late. How ridiculous. Why should people suffer? Why? Should there be this cost in, in human suffering and in, in, in monetary expenditure when they don't have to have this disease? There are tests to detect iron overload, if doctors think to order them, and there's an effective treatment. Yeah. Right arm this time? Sure. Giving blood every few weeks or months drains the excess iron and prevents damage to the organs. For Lori Cruz, it's a treatment that changed his life. Energy level was just... Fantastic. I, I get up in the morning, I feel like doing something. I don't, uh, I'm not feeling like going back to bed. <laughs> but not everyone is so fortunate. Doctors are worried that some patients may be developing the complications due to iron overload because they aren't being diagnosed early, which is why some important studies are now underway. Starting this month, 10,000 blood donors are being tested for signs of iron overload. And if the study shows widespread screening works, proponents say they'll push for national testing. It will actually save the system to screen people and treat them before they get into the complications, which can be very expensive. Meanwhile, advocates like Marie Warder are urging Canadians with the odd list of symptoms to get tested. It is a perfectly preventable disease. And by finding it early, patients can escape the often fatal effects of iron overload.